Hey, a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the Minnesota Wild season preview. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe down below or at the top of the widget that's easy to use at the end of the video. The Wild, of course, are coming off of a very nice season last year, led by the Rook Kirill Kaprizov, 35-16-5 for 75 points. Now, this season, for whatever reason, they are considered fairly low in most projections. The Hockey News has them at fifth. Some other things I see do have them at fourth, just out of the playoffs. But a lot of things do have them at fifth, which I find um, kind of interesting just due to the fact that they had a successful season last year. They have a young goaltender in Capo Caco, who was very successful, and a veteran goaltender in Cam Talbot, who seems to be revitalizing his career after kind of getting overtaxed early on, finding his like way kind of going bouncing around the league and now finally finding a good staying place here in Minnesota. So it seems like they have a good footing in net. And then you obviously have a good footing on defense when you have a uh, Brodeen still, you still have Matt Dumba and you still have Jared Spurgeon out there. Now the other three are going to be interesting. Alex Golagoski is a good veteran that still plays solid defense though when he's healthy. So that's a pretty good pickup. And then Jordy Ben is a guy that just does what he has to do. Obviously, Dmitry Kulikov is the guy that you would envision if, um, say, somebody you were to trade for or pick up on the waiver wire would probably be the guy you would then bounce out in order to give him that chance. Or, of course, if the young Kalen Addison, who's injured day-to-day -to, -day to start the season, is going to come up and play a role on this team as well, which you would think he would do at a certain point. You would think the guy that would be bounced out, or you, if you want to put in the veteran John Murrell, would be... Dmitry Kulikov. But all things considered, that's a pretty good defense led by the great Brodeen, who's one of the more underrated just defensive defensemen who still puts up 23 points in a season. Alex Golgoski's a good veteran to have as well. Jared Spurgeon's a very good overall defenseman. And then Matt Dumba, obviously, is a good defenseman. And then Ben is a guy that just knows what he's doing, knows that he's just that shot-blocking brute force guy and plays that role in a very good way. And also, did put up nine assists, which is a nice bonus last season as well. So you got the defense, you have the goaltending foundation. That's why I'm very shocked that they have them projected that low. Because when it comes to the Central Division, obviously you have the Colorado Avalanche that people would consider at the top of it. But then between Dallas, between Minnesota, St. Louis, Winnipeg, those are the other teams that you would consider. And then, yeah, th those are really the other teams you would consider the playoff teams. It's kind of all just a throw-in crapshoot between those teams because this is kind of a battle for second and third, I'm, I feel it's going to be in this division where the Avalanche are going to be able to have first place, I think. And then it's going to be a battle for who gets the other two playoff spots. So I don't see why more projections don't see the Wild because you also have a young, fun player other than just Marco Rossi once he's going to be able to come up. Obviously, he had COVID last year, so it's going to take him a bit to fully get back. You're going to want him to get a little bit of time. But when he's able to come up, he's going to be a fun young player to follow. Going to be able to follow your 2016 pick, uh, Brandon uh, Doomhay, or uh, Brandon Dahame. I always mispronounce his name, but he's um, from listening to uh, NHL and um, different things. Seems to be a good young player that you have a chance to develop into a solid fourth liner. So you have fun young players. You got Kevin Fiala, who is definitely one of the more fun guys to watch. A great quick skater, a guy that also just seems to be getting better when it comes to just seeing the ice as well as always has had the right touch to be able to get to the right spots to score on the ice. So you have good players on this team. You have a good foundation on this team. You have a good coach in Everson. So I believe this team is in a right spot. That's why I believe I said it was fifth. Yeah, fifth. Um, it's surprising they have them projected as five with how good of a season you had. You're going to have Kirill in the next season, Erickson Eck in the next season as you continue to develop. Uh, Zuccarello, I think the only reason this team is projected so low Quite honestly, Nico Sturm emerged and was a pleasant surprise with how well he emerged. I, I think you thought maybe he would be a solid um, bottom six guy, but when you had to move him up in your lineup for injuries, he actually played well as well. So he's one of those guys that is kind of those swing men if you need to use him because of injuries in any spot in kind of the top um, nine, probably not the first line, but the second through fourth because he kind of showed he can do that last year. So. You have a good foundation, you have a good goal, and you have a good defense. I would say this team is a bubble team going into the season, but that's because this is going to be kind of a fight to the death in that central division, other than if you're Colorado, I think, between St. Louis, between Winnipeg, between Dallas, and between Minnesota, and even throw Chicago in there if they get off to a good start um, after having a bad first game. 
then you can kind of put them into that grouping too if they're able to do it with their veterans and with Mark andre Fleury and Ned and bringing in Seth Jones. So I think it's just going to be a battle for those two through three spots and the only decisive um, for sure team in this division that's going to be able to win that battle to me other than the Winnipeg Jets maybe because they got the hellbuck factor of course is definitely the Colorado Avalanche. So I hope you all enjoyed this season preview to the Minnesota Wild. I think it is going to be a successful season for you all again. I think you go to all battle for a playoff spot yet again and potentially be in the playoffs and have a chance to compete for that Stanley Cup yet again because you have Cabo Cockin and again good young goaltender Cam Talbot. Good depth on defense. You're going to have Kalen Addison coming up at a certain point. And you're going to have also the great Marco Rossi. And when he's back from his ankle injury, which I believe is still about five weeks away, you got a very young, fun player in Matthew Boldy, who is a puck craftsman that you're going to be able to have to create plays to score, to just look very good with the young Marco Rossi and the young Kirill Kaprizov as all those guys develop together. So again, have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Good luck this season, Wild fans. Enjoy the NHL season, and good luck as your season starts tonight. Peace out, everybody. Subscribe down below on the easy-to-use widget up above. Go Minnesota Wild. Enjoy the season. Peace.